Hello my dear students today we are going to discuss a new chapter of class 8 so for this you all are welcome to the Vikas Bharti school YouTube channel so we are going to learn about a new chapter which is circulatory system of class 8 okay so in this chapter we we are going to discuss few topics just like components of the circulatory system but before then that we will discuss about the introductory part of the circulatory system and then composition of the blood and then function function of the blood and then different kinds of blood groups their rh factor recess factor and in the end we will discuss about the blood vessels which is the main component of the circulatory system okay so let's start so first of all i i would like to tell you some uh, introduction of the circulatory system human body have different kinds of systems in it so among all it is one of the basic system that everybody needs but what is the need of the circulatory system today I am going to tell you you must be knowing that to live healthy or to survive on this earth we need different kinds of uh, things on a day, day to day basis or a daily basis just like food water nutrients okay and many more things we need to live but these things just like nutrients that we derive from the food water that we drink food that we eat these all things are needed by each and every cell of the body part so do you know who is responsible to transport these kind of thing or who is responsible to supply these kind of uh, things to all body cells yes it is our circulatory system so circulatory system is a kind of transport system which is present in our body that is helpful in the supply of these materials throughout the body with the help of blood so circulatory system is a kind of transport system that is responsible to transport the various kind of material throughout the body with the help of blood so now we are going to discuss about the composition uh, uh, component of the circulatory system are you ready so components of the circulatory system circulatory system is made up of of course heart our heart is a basic organ of the circulatory system it works like a pump we will discuss uh, uh, we will discuss this portion deeply later on in this chapter after heart we need blood which is a fluid that keeps on flowing inside our body throughout the different uh, throughout the parts after blood blood vessels Blood vessels are the net network of this uh, small or broad pipes through which the blood flows keep on flowing throughout the body. After blood vessels, lymphatic system. We will discuss the role of lymph and lymphatic system later on. Okay, so these are the component of the blood. Heart. Blood, uh, these are the component of the circulatory system our heart which is a muscular organ blood which is a fluid blood vessels which is a network of the uh, 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 pipes through which the blood flows throughout the body and then lymphatic system we will discuss the function of each and every component in detail so blood we are going to discuss the next uh, uh, topic which is a blood and we are going to discuss the composition of blood okay let me tell you one important thing a human adult and a human adult usually have up to 5 liters of blood in its body okay so a adult human have 5 liter of blood in its body and what are the composition of blood how blood is made up inside our body so blood blood comprise basically two things plasma and corpuscles
प्लाज्मा एंड कॉर्पगल्स सर आई टोल्ड यू ब्लड कंपराइजेस ऑफ टू थिंग्स प्लाज्मा एंड कॉर्पगल्स लेट मी टेल यू प्लाज्मा इज अ लिक्विड पार्ट ऑफ द ब्लड and the concentration of plasma is total 60% up to 60% and corpuscles are the cellular part of the blood cellular part of the blood and it is present up to 40% the uh, the uh, the part of the uh, corpuscles is 40% of the overall blood present inside our body plasma it is a liquid part as i told you so basically it contains water other than water salts and mineral dissolved salts and minerals hormones and enzymes then uh, uh, apart from these proteins which are helpful in the clotting of the blood etc so plasma is a plasma is a kind of liquid which is a, a mixture of many things okay so now we are going to discuss the corpuscles which is a cellular part so blood corpuscles can be categorized into three types rbc wbcs and platelets the full form of rbc is red blood corpuscles wbc is white blood corpuscles platelets red blood corpuscles are also known as red blood cells simply white blood cells and platelets they have other names also as rbc is known as erythrocytes wbc is known as leukocytes and platelets is known as thrombocytes so let me briefly tell you about the function of these three types of cells which remain present in in our blood rbc the main function of rbc is the transportation of the various gases just like oxygen and carbon dioxide in our body wbc the main function of wbc is to provide immunity it fights against the infection we will discuss uh, later on about the wbc platelets platelets are the kind of special cell that helps in the blood clotting whenever we get injured when whenever there is any injury inside our body platelets help the blood to clot okay so after discussing the composition of blood we are going to discuss the next topic which is the function of blood so blood is a very important uh, body fluid which remains inside which is present inside our body and it does various things for our body so we are going to discuss the various function of the blood so first blood helps in the transportation of digested food material what the food whatever the food which, which we are getting in first digested and after the digestion when they get fully digested they need to transport to the each and every part of the cell each and every part of the body from the intestine to the various parts so blood transport these nutrient material from the intestine to the various body cells the next function is transportation of gases you know very well we breathe through our nose and lungs but what happens when we inhale the oxygen it goes to the lungs and who transport further this oxygen to the different parts of the uh, uh, body blood blood transport oxygen from lungs to the body tissues and when body tissue utilize this oxygen they produce carbon dioxide which is which is very harmful for our body so simultaneously the same blood transport that carbon dioxide from the body tissue back to the lungs third function 
it helps in the transportation of hormones and enzymes which is be, which is continuously being secreted inside our body we have different kinds of glands inside our body as uh, just like endocrine gland and exocrine gland endocrine gland produce various hormones for the different functions exocrine gland produce various enzymes for the different functions so these enzymes or uh, hormones which are being secreted inside our body keep on transporting through the same fluid which is the blood so blood is a main transportary uh, transportary fluid present inside our body next it helps in the elimination of excretory material my dear children you know very well that inside our body on a continuous basis various kind of metabolic activities keep on happening so during the during this metabolic activity various kind of uh, uh, excretory product is being generated just like urea just like various gases and other metabolic products so these are very harmful for our body the accumulation of these harmful product or these excretory product is not good for our body so this should these uh, uh, harmful material should be immediately released out from the body and blood transport blood collect these harmful uh, waste material from the body to the concern organ just like kidney or liver so that these harmful product can be eliminated from our body next blood helps in the regulation of body temperature you know know that whenever metabolic activity activities keep on happening inside our body there lots of heat is generated so whenever a organ due to the metabolic activity keep on generating heat so what the blood does there blood transport or distribute this heat to the various kind of uh, to the various part of the body so that our body temperature remain constant 37 degree celsius okay uh, next function of the blood it provides immunity as i told you earlier that blood has the various kind of cells just like wbc these are the fighter cells they keep on fighting against the germs against the pathogen or against the disease causing microorganisms so blood provides us immunity next blood maintains the water salt balance means blood maintains the concentration of our body fluid next function blood helps in wound healing how it helps in wound healing whenever we get a cut or whenever we get an injury there blood clotting occur due to that blood clotting the healing process can be done quickly so blood helps in healing also so now we are going to discuss the various kind of blood groups human blood groups and uh, my dear students you must be having an idea that various uh, different people may have different kinds of blood groups so uh, we have total in humans we have total four kinds of blood groups a b ab and o blood group but who told us that blood group can vary person to person so there was a biologist karl lenstiner in 1901 he told us one thing that human in human races there are different kinds of blood groups blood group a blood group b blood group ab and blood group o we have four usually four main types of blood group everyone's blood looks same but why we are saying that blood groups uh, there are four kinds of blood groups who makes them different from each other so he told us karl lenstiner told us that blood groups can be categorized on the basis of the antigen and antibody present inside our body so let us go through a table to get the clear idea about the different kinds of blood groups so i'm going to make a table blood groups a b ab and o antigen antibody
Before discussing the blood groups, we should have a clear idea about the antigen and antibody. Antigen or antibody are the special kind of natural protein that keep on synthesizing in our body. So the presence and absence of antigen and antibody decides our blood groups. So according to Carl Lenstner, if somebody have A antigen on its RBC, this is a RBC, red blood cells. If somebody has A antigen on its RBC, so its blood group will be A. But if a person is having an antigen called A, then he must be antibody B in its plasma. So location of antigen is on the surface of RBC and the location of antibody in the plasma of the blood. Getting my point? So similarly, the blood, the person who is having blood group B must have B antigen on its RBC surface and A antibody in its plasma. So similarly, a person who is having the blood group AB must have both antigen on its RBC, antigen A and anti antigen B and antibody is nil, nil antibody in its plasma. It does not have, it must not have any antibody in its plasma if a person is having both type of antigen on its RBC. Why it is so? I will discuss it later on. Blood group O. Blood group O, person who is having blood group O is, does not contain any antigen on its RBC. So its RBC remain free of any antigen. So that is why it may have or it, both type of antibody in its blood. So the presence and absence of the antigen and antibody decides the blood groups. Clear? Why there is, if, if a person ha is having suppose A antigen, why it should not have A antibody? Because the same antigen and antibody kills each other. They are enemy of each other. If the same type of, uh, type of antibo antibody or antigen reacts with each other, the blood get clots. This process is called agglutination or clumping. So that should not be happen. So the same things doctors keep in their mind before transfusing the blood, someone's blood into any, anyone's body. Getting my point? Okay. Let me tell you one interesting, one more interesting thing about the blood group, uh, human blood group. A person who is having AB blood group is called universal acceptor. And a person who is having O blood group is called universal donor. Means, suppose my blood group is AB, I can accept anyone's blood easily without any problem. If my blood group is O, I can donate my blood to anybody without any problem. So there will be no clumping, no agglutination will occur. Apart from these blood group, apart from these four types of blood groups, there are one more distinguish of the blood group according to the presence and absence of the RS factor. Apart from the uh, normal antigens, there are one more antigen present in somebody's blood or somebody's surface of the RBCs. So this antigen is called RH antigen. RH antigen. Why we call this RS factor? Because first time it discovered in the rhesus macaque monkey. So that is why its name is, the, the name of this antigen is RH antigen. If suppose that a person who is having A antigen on its RBC, so the blood group will be A. Apart from A, 
apart from A antigen if it is having RH antigen. So the same blood group will be called as A positive. If the person is only having an antigen but not RH antigen the same person the, uh, the blood group of same person will called as A negative. Similarly if a person who is having the blood group B having both antigen B antigen as well as RH antigen just in this case. So this will be called as B positive means positive or negative sign comes by the presence or absence of the extra antigen which is RS antigen. So now we have four different types of blood group A positive, A negative, B positive, B negative, AB positive, AB negative, O positive and O negative Be on the basis of presence and absence of one extra antigen apart from these no, uh, natural antigen or normal antigens. Getting my point? So dear students, uh, uh, till then we have discussed many more topics. In our next video, we will discuss about the structure of heart and the function of heart. So till then, bye bye.